Welcome to another episode of Mental Health and Makeup Monday. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you're new and just stopping by, hi. How are you? Glad you're here. So your girl has been going through it. It's been a hot minute. If you've been here before, uh, it's been like eight months. Yeah. Sorry. Well, no, not sorry, actually. Been going through it, okay? So anyway, I'm back. So today I'm going to be talking about when it is time to move on to a different therapist. Yes, you heard me right. When is it time to say goodbye? Hasta luego. See you later. Avisen. Also, please bear with me. <laughs> I'm super out of practice. Yeah, your girl's been a hot mess. But anyway, I'm here. Sign numero uno. They are behaving unethically. You know, sharing details of other clients or being sexual anyway. Time to move on. All right. That's a big no-no. Sign number two. They frequently cancel or reschedule, okay? Rescheduling has to happen sometimes, but if it's frequent, too much, all the time, then, you know, not good. Or if they're always late. Your time is valuable just as much as theirs is, so they need to be respectful of your time, all right? Now, like I said, rescheduling happens, things come up, life happens. Sometimes it cannot be helped, but if it's too frequent, time to move on, okay? Side note, by the way, for those of you who've watched other videos, you know that we had a Discord at one point in time, but I let it go because it was just way too much and overwhelming for me. I couldn't manage it. I tried to transfer it to someone else and then they couldn't, I don't know. It was just way above my head and I bit off way more than I could choose. So I apologize that, you know, it's no longer there. I mean, it's there, but I'm not there and my colleague's not there and, but we're still here for you. So if you have questions or whatever, you know, leave them in the comment section. I will, I will answer your questions or Sophia will answer your questions. We'll get to you. Okay. I promise. But as far as the discord thing is concerned, so sorry. Drop the ball on that one. Too much for me. Way over my head. I said that. Anyway, moving on. So this next one is really big one for me personally. Okay. If you have to remind them every session about things that you've shared with them, no es bueno, okay? Now, it's unrealistic to think they're gonna remember everything. It's okay to need a reminder occasionally, but if you feel like you're repeating yourself and sharing the same thing over and over because the therapist doesn't recall or they're asking you to remind them, no, okay? You're important, okay? The things that you share are important and the therapist needs to be mindful of that and refresh themselves before their session. So if they're not remembering, that's not good. Okay, move on. Another side note. Friend got me a new palette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bikini bottom. Nice little SpongeBob reference there. But isn't it pretty? Yeah. So what should I do? Hmm. I don't know. Really, really nervous about this, guys. We'll see how it goes. If your therapist claims to be an expert in everything. Okay. No. A therapist might have like a speciality or a lot of experience in one particular area, but it doesn't necessarily make them an expert, okay? We're always learning and growing. And anyone that claims to know it all is probably not someone that will serve you well in the way that you need to, because the whole point of therapy is to empower you to connect with yourself and understand that you're the expert of your life. We're just there along for the ride. We're the navigators, all right? So you're the boss, you're in charge. And if anybody makes you feel stupid in any kind of way, also, not a good sign. Another telltale sign is if you're just not vibing with them. That happens sometimes. You can have a personality mismatch with your therapist and, you know, there's no need to force something if you just ain't feeling it, okay? Shop around, all right? A huge part of the therapy process is your relationship with your therapist. And so if you're not vibing, then you're not going to get anything out of it. You know, if it feels too awkward to you or they're maybe too cold or, or maybe a bit impersonal it feels to you, they're not engaging in some way, then yeah, not a good sign. You know, when you feel something in your bones, you just know. I feel it in my bones. Also, another sign to be very mindful of is if you feel like you're not making any progress, okay? Now, process is slow, depending on what your goals are, but there needs to be some kind of progress that you're able to identify for yourself if you're going to therapy, 
Now, progress is not linear. Sometimes it ebbs and flows. Sometimes you take three steps forward and five steps back. But be mindful of what your goals are. Have a clear idea in mind of what you're trying to get out of therapy so that you can assess for yourself if this is benefiting you, okay? And you need to be able to talk to your therapist about these goals and how you're feeling about your progress, okay? They need to be checking in periodically to see where you're at with things and how you're feeling, okay? Which brings me to my next point. If you feel like you cannot be honest with your therapist, it is time to move on, okay? I'm gonna say it again. No es bueno, all right? The whole point of therapy is that you are talking and exploring things that are important to you. And if you can't be honest with that person, then you're not gonna get anything out of it, all right? Please keep in mind, the work is on you. It is your job to do the work and all the things, but the therapist is there to facilitate. So if you feel like you're not getting anywhere, then first of all, talk to them about it. All right. Second of all, ask yourself, am I being honest about what I'm doing to get out of this? Am I doing my part? All right. So it's not just the therapist. But anyway, you get my point. Moving on. Another sign is if the therapist talks way too much about themselves. Okay. Not good. This is your time, not theirs. So it's okay if a therapist offers some self-disclosure if it is therapeutic for you. Okay. If it's helpful. But it needs to be relevant, okay? It can't be just someone just gabbing about their stuff and what they've been through and all the things, okay? The session should be totally focused on you, okay? So keep that one in mind. That's a big one. All right, another one is real important, okay? It is our job. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Let me do this other eye. Okay. Not bad, not bad. I mean, considering. <laughs> not a makeup artist. Right then, where was it? Oh yes, if you are too dependent on your therapist, it is time to cut the cord and move on, okay? It is our job to put ourselves out of a job, to empower you, like I said earlier, to be able to cope with life and to get tools and all the things. So our job is to put ourselves out of a job. So if you find that you're too dependent and you're like, oh, I need to talk to my therapist, like excessively, it's probably time to move on. That could indicate an unhealthy relationship with your therapist. I'm going to encourage you to talk to your therapist about it first before you just cut and run, you know, because maybe the therapist and you could do some processing together about why that is, where's that coming from and how to challenge it, okay? The idea is that you might start off like weekly, for instance, and then eventually transition to every couple weeks to like every three weeks or once a month or just as needed. You know, you might go some time without seeing the therapist and then go back because you hit a couple bumps in the road. That's okay. All right. But if it's been like 10 plus years and you're doing weekly and you don't know and you can't miss a week because you just life falls apart, probably not a good sign. Another sign that is very important to keep in mind. Now this one kind of ties back into the one I said earlier, but if you feel like they just don't get you, like if you don't feel like you're being really heard and understood to help you process through things, then you know, you know what I'm gonna say. Time to move on, all right? And again, I'm gonna encourage you that if you're noticing any of these things and you're in therapy, talk to your therapist about it, okay? Say, hey, I watched this crazy lady do this video and she said this and you know, that's a good segue, you know, just a suggestion. And if your therapist is defensive and you don't feel like you're getting anywhere, or you still feel like it's just like, well, that was pointless, then move on, okay? Your therapist is a human, so it's natural to have some defenses, especially when we're being critiqued or anything like that. But, you know, it's their job to serve you. And if you don't feel like you're being served, then, you know, what I'm going to say. So they need to be able to be reflective and open and consider what it is that you're sharing with them. Okay, so you can get the most out of your therapy. So before I move on to the last sign you need to be mindful of, have you had any experiences in therapy that you would like to share with others? Leave a comment down below. Pour focus. Or maybe you have another sign that I missed where you feel like, yeah, it's time to move on. Like, hey, Keisha, you missed one. Leave it in the comments, please. I would appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right. I don't know what I did with my highlighter, so I'm going to use eyeshadow. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. It works, right? So I said I had one more, but I actually have two because I just thought of another one. Wait, my brain works sometimes. Anyway. 
what was it? Right, big one. All right, pay attention. If you feel like your therapist doesn't challenge you, okay? I feel like this one kind of ties into another one I mentioned, but I want to expand on it a little more. You want someone that's going to challenge you so that you can make the changes that you would like to see in your life. So if you're just using it as a venting session and, you know, obviously your therapist needs to be on your side and you need to feel validated and all the things, but also you need to be called out on your shit too. Okay. So your therapist should be able to do that in a very diplomatic way. Okay. In an objective way and not a judgy way. All right. So keep that one right. And finally, last but not least, if you feel like you no longer know why you're going to therapy, then it's probably time to move on. If you're continuing to go because you feel obligated or it's difficult for you to terminate the relationship with your therapist, you know, you do need, you need to do some reflecting on that. Okay. Keep these things in mind. They're very important. All right. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching. Here's the final look. How'd I do? My hair is a hot mess, as per usual. Um, <laughs> thanks for sticking with me. I hope this was helpful. Keep these things in mind. Mental Health Awareness Month is this month. So be mindful of your mental health. And consider all the things I was talking about today. And as always, if you ever have questions, leave them in the comments. I will get back to you. And until next time, be well, be strong, and be loved. Thanks for watching. I th how'd I do? I think I did okay, considering it's been eight months. Like, I haven't done the full makeup in, like, eight months. Yeah. Thanks, folks, for reminding me of that, by the way. I appreciate it. Call me out. Like, hey, what's that? Where you been? I don't know. Living life? Not really. Ugh. Hot mess. Anyway. <laughs> right then. Okay. See you later. I'm done. <laughs>